We've calmed down from some extended solar storming, but new aurora chances are just around the corner. And flare activity may have calmed down for this week, but it may not last all that long. Those stories and more are in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is calming down a bit compared to last week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we are saying goodbye to this big, deep coronal hole here in the south. This gave us some fast wind, and along with a partially Earth-directed solar storm, gave us some decent aurora over a large a portion of last week, but things have finally calmed down. In fact, we're not just calming down with fast solar wind, we're actually calming down in terms of active regions as well. Region 4172 has been the big uh, player on the Earth-facing disk this week, but you know what, it hasn't sh uh, shot any big uh, Earth-directed solar storms, and we're finally watching it rotate to the sun's far side. We also have region 4180 and 4179. We're watching them grow. They have the chance to become big flare players, but as of yet, not really manifesting anything. So believe it or not, despite the fact that we have 13 active regions in Earth view, we have kind of quieted down on the dayside radio bands. We're only sitting at a minor noise on the radio bands right now. So this is good news for amateur radio operators. On top of that, we have this beautiful set of structures here. We've got these two filaments that are really kind of mirror images of one another. They kind of kink like this and then go up like that. This is once again that mirror imaging of the northern and southern hemispheres giving us deep hints as to what our magnetic dynamo in our star is doing and definitely reminding us that we are in the declining phase. And because of that, we do have yet another coronal hole we're going to be contending with. This coronal hole has not uh, got the right polarity to give us a big solar storm, but it could still bump us up to storm levels, especially at high latitude starting in about three or so days. So Roar Photographers, if you didn't get some fun out of the last coronal hole and last bit of solar storming, well, you're going to get another chance. And this time the moon is going to be a lot more dim. And now switching to our far-sighted view, we're able to use Stereo A imagery again because Stereo A has moved far enough in its orbit to the west limb that it's looking at the sun substantially from the side. In fact, you can see here's Earth Here's the sun and here's Stereo A staring at the sun very much from the side. This is that coronal hole that was giving us some fast solar wind last week. As you can see, it's still coming into Stereo's view. You can also see 40, region 4165, 4168, 4173, and then a couple players. This is old region 4167, and this is 4161, and I'm bringing that up because we'll see here in a minute that these regions are still being extremely active. In fact, as I set this in motion, you can still see region 4173. Of course, region 4168 is still firing like crazy, but you will see a few things disappearing off of the west limb in Stereo's view that lets you know there's stuff that we can't see that is still giving us are still firing big solar flares and solar storms. You can also see region 4172. This region has been quite active. And you can even see the funny face that the sun is making now. It looks, it looks kind of like a like an old angry, angry pirate or something. He's got a big nose here and this looking kind of arr kind of face at us. It's kind of hard not to see it once you see it, isn't it? Anyway, region 4172 is the one we've been watching, so we're going to continue to see if that grows over the course of time. And region 4171 also looks like it's actually getting more active as the sun, uh, as we see this from Stereo's view, and it rotates to the sun's far side. So once we pull up the JSOC HMI helioseismology far-sighted viewer, you really get to see how many active regions are on the sun the entire sun 
uh, this week. Here we go. Look at this mess. I'm not even sure I can count all of these. So here's the front side of the sun in gray. We have the far side of the sun in black. And as of about the fourth, you can see all region 4167. That was the one I was talking about. And there's 4161. These regions continue to be big players as they rotated to the sun's far side. You can see them here and you'll see a, a dot in here. So these are regions that we're really watching. The others are about to rotate back into Earth view. 4155 is also going to give us a little bit of trouble, but I'm really more concerned about region 4167. I think that's a big flare player, as well as this whole cluster in here, because we've been seeing, even from Stereo's vantage point, seeing how active they are. And of course, don't forget region 4168, because that was the big flare player that gave us some big flares um, just a week or so ago. So in about, starting in about four or five days, we should start seeing that solar flux really begin to rise again. And these big flare players will start returning kind of one at a time. So over, you know, you're going to get a break for about mm, not quite a week. And then things are going to start getting noisy. And then we'll be back to being noisy for probably the next two weeks. And now stepping outside to look at our current conditions with our global geochron map, we first take a look at the ov ovation auroral power. This is giving us an idea of where the aurora is and how strong it is. And as you can see, we've gotten a little bit of it around the 14th, but things have really been dying down. We haven't seen all that much in the way of the aurora because we've gotten uh, kind of through the bulk of that solar storm and fast solar wind. So things are returning to kind of unsettled conditions. And so you would think is as we switch to our Roti GPS and GNSS scintillation risk map that you wouldn't see very many hot spots here, but you sure are. You're seeing them all over the place, even at high latitudes. Let me go back a little bit. You're seeing a lot. And the reason for this is because not only is the ionosphere very unstable right now because we're still kind of calming down, but we also have a lot of particles in the radiation belts that have been very, very ramped up. So those particles are being scattered and shot into the upper atmosphere as well. So these things all together kind of give GPS signals a run for their for their money. And it's it will calm down, but you might have to give it a little bit, you know, a couple more days before things really calm down. Now, on top of that, we do have our DRAP radio blackout and polar caps uh, uh, you know, threat meter. And really what we're seeing right now is because we've gotten that uh, solar flare radio noise to kind of kind of quiet down. We're really not seeing all that much here. You see it just a little bit coming up to about 10 to 15 megahertz in terms of impact and degradation to your uh, day side radio bands. And this is at the HF and VHF range. So don't worry about it too much. We should be de dealing with uh, reasonably quiet conditions, at least for the HF to VHF range. The noise is a, a little bit minor, but not too bad. Expect it, however, to move back up into the moderate range as we move to the rest of this week because we are expecting those solar flares to pick up when those new active regions begin to rot rotate into Earth view. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, and by the 21st, the moon will be less than 4% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some waning Perseids or some Aurora, because we do have that new chance coming around here soon, well, now is your perfect chance. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind to hit Earth starting around the 18th or possibly into the 19th. It's a little bit hard to tell exactly when that fast wind will hit, but at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now expect that right around the 18th into the 19th, but after that, things will calm down just a little bit. We'll be into that fast wind stream, but we still could get some decent chances for Aurora as we move into midweek. Now, at mid-latitudes, while we're only expecting unsettled to active conditions, with likely the active conditions hitting right around the 19th, although we are expecting about a 30% chance of reaching minor storm levels. So aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, well, it might be a little bit more sporadic trying to catch that aurora. It might be kind of do dominated by substorms, but if you're dedicated, it might be worth a look. And now switching to our uh, solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting in the mid 100s for solar flux. You can see about the mid 120s and we are kind of expecting it to stay like that. We've got minor noise on the bands right now. NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout and only about a 5% chance of R3 level radio blackouts. Those are the X-class flares and that's likely going to last at least 
through the weekend into Monday. Probably going to start picking up moderate noise and seeing that, uh, you know, that solar flux rise as well as the noise on the bands rise. Possibly big, bigger risk for radio blackouts too when those new regions rotate into Earth view, which will be around the 19th. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy the few more days of quiet because it looks like things are going to change pretty soon. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. We are sitting in the D1 normal range. This is for you aviators at flight level 360. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. NOAA is giving us about a 1% chance of risk for a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level. And that is likely going to continue all throughout this week. I don't really see a chance for that radiation storm risk to rise very much. So if you're a frequent flyer, and this does mean air crew. It looks like you guys are all in the clear. But remember, as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday, we could see those new regions rotating into Earth view. So keep your eye on those ICAO advisories, especially for radio blackouts. And if you're a drone flyer, watch carefully because you could have issues near dawn and near dusk. So the space weather this week has calmed down a little bit compared to last week. Now we do have some fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a decent show over in through about Wednesday of this upcoming week. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, the show's going to be a bit more fleeting, so only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the nice news for you is that we've got kind of minor noise on the dayside radio bands right now, and this is going to continue over the next couple days. But we do have those bigger regions rotating back into Earth view from the sun's far side, starting in about four days, maybe five days. It's kind of hard to tell. And likely we're going to see those big radio blackouts rise as well as that solar flux and the noise. So enjoy this little break while you can. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we've got that solar storm that's going to be coming in the next couple days, but minor noise on the day side radio bands. So likely you're going to have a little bit more trouble on the night side of Earth than you will the day side of Earth, but especially near dawn and dusk and anywhere near Aurora, be sure to stay vigilant and calibrate your magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.